Do you want to win when you play rock, paper, scissors? Of course you do. Well, this week I've got some science that's going to help you do just that. My name is Dan Riskin. Every week I put together five science stories that I think are just amazing and I send them out in a free email to my subscribers. If you want to sign up for that, just go to followthebatsignal.com. This week, my favorite science story is about rock, paper, scissors, and specifically some scientific tricks you can use to improve your odds of winning. This comes from a study that was published in a journal called Social, Cognitive, and Effective Neuroscience. And what they did for this is they had people wearing EEG helmets that measure brain activity and brain waves while those people played games of rock, paper, scissors. And these were real games between real people. They had 31 pairs of people. They weren't playing in front of each other, shaking their arms around. They were playing on computer terminals, but it was a real-time, actual game between pairs of people. And these people didn't just play once. They played 480 times in a row against the same person. And the big question in the study was, can we see their brainwaves synchronizing? Can we see anything encoded in the brainwaves about what's happening in the game? And what they found is they could see in the brainwaves what a person was going to play before they played it, which is really cool. What they could not see is an anticipation of what the other person was going to play. So that's what keeps it interesting is it's impossible to know exactly what the other person's going to do next. They also paid attention to what had happened in the round previous. You know, they're playing 480 times in a row. If they're playing round 66, could they see any signal from round 65 being encoded? And what they found is it varies between people, but in general, the people that do better are the ones who aren't thinking about what just happened and who are trying to be as random as possible. And that was their big take home message is that being random is the optimal strategy. But I disagree. I don't think being random is the optimal strategy. I mean, if you're random, you're gonna win half of the time on average, but you're playing against somebody who's not random. So if you can choose a strategy that takes advantage of their non-randomness, well, then you're beating random, aren't you? So there are a couple of key pieces of data that come out of this paper that I think point to strategies you could use to win at rock, paper, scissors, especially if you're playing multiple times in a row against the same person. So here are the two things you can do to win at rock, paper, scissors. The first one, lean toward paper. Don't use it all the time, but most people lean toward rock. In the study, they looked at all their participants and the fact that nobody quite hits a third, a third, a third, like you would if you were a random rock, paper, scissors generator. Most people have a bias one way or the other. And in general, that bias tends to be towards rock. This is a pie chart of what the most popular play was among the 62 people. And you can see that more than half of those people tended to choose rock more often than the other two. And only 15% of those people chose scissors. So if you're going up against a random person, odds are they don't favor scissors. So you might as well favor paper because they're probably not gonna beat you overall if you're leaning toward paper a little bit more. The second thing you can do to win at rock, paper, scissors is to pay attention to what they just played. One of the really interesting phenomena that comes out of watching humans play rock, paper, scissors, and this was true in this study, but it's been shown before, is that people switch from round to round more often than they should. If you were really random, if you just played rock, there would be a 33% chance that you played rock again but that's not what happens. People are more likely to switch than they should be. They don't switch 66% of the time, they switch slightly more often than 66% of the time. And as a result, you know a little bit about what they're gonna play. If they've just played paper, they're probably not gonna play paper again. So on the next round, play the thing that would lose to paper because you're not worried about that. So play rock. So you're playing, they play paper, you think, oh, paper beats rock, I will play rock on the next round. And then you play rock on the next round. And if they don't repeat, which is what you're anticipating, you're either gonna tie or you're gonna win. So that's the two things you can do to improve your game. And listen, if those fail, there's always what they called the optimal strategy in the paper, which is to be random. And ironically, if you wanna be random, the only way to really do that is to create a random sequence on a computer, memorize it, and then just use that sequence. Just know it in your head and have it planned out what you're gonna do. That might feel like the opposite of random, but that's actually the most random you can be.
<laughs> Isn't that cool? Anyway, good luck. I hope you win. And uh, yeah, let's do one right now. Ready? One, two, three, show.